Hello folks, this is Dr. Don, and I want to take a few minutes to help you make your decision about the technology you're going to use in Business 233. This is homework number two, and uh, I just opened it. I hadn't looked at it in a while, and I was interested to see how often you had to use technology or needed to use technology to help you answer the questions there. This first question is about a dot plot and you can blow it up to get a better look at the dot plot, but they don't actually require you to make a dot plot in this particular problem. So StatCrunch wouldn't help you very much. Um, if they gave you the data, it would help you answer these questions. But again, they're just asking you to analyze this dot plot, but let's move on. The second question, you're given a lot of data here, and it says use a stem and leaf plot. So that means you've got to build a stem and leaf plot. Now you could just, if you know about stem and leaf plots, inspect the data and then manually, mentally construct uh, a stem and leaf plot. But StatCrunch will help you do it very, very quickly. And But here, all you need to do is to open up StatCrunch and get this data into StatCrunch so you don't have to key it in. And these little rectangles that you'll see around data, uh, hover over that and it says click to copy the table, click on that, and then I'm going to click on open in StatCrunch. And so it's keyed all that data directly into StatCrunch. And that's one of the things I mentioned about the, the TI. The TI there are some ways you can get a couple of c cables and connect your TI and then run a little program and then manually move the data out of here into a CSV table and from the CSV table into your TI, yada, yada, yada. This is a whole lot easier to get your data into StatCrunch. Once you're there, there there's very few things that we use a lot in StatCrunch. More than likely, the procedure you're going to need is going to be under the Data tab, the stat tab, in this case, the graph tab. And we want a stem and leaf, and we get this dialog, and we're going to select our data was in that column, make it move over into the right side, and I'm going to leave everything else default for right now, and click on Compute. And we get a stem and leaf, and uh, the way that StatCrunch shows a stem and leaf is a little bit different from the way that Larson is showing here. And what StatCrunch does, it breaks down the stems uh, from 0 to 5 and 5 through 9. And so this is 9, 0, and then there's no leaf on the second half of 9. Then that's 10, uh, 0, 3. And there's 11. We've got 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then 8. And if we look over there, there's 0, 0, 1, 8. Here's 12 is 0, 0, 3, 4, 5. There's 12, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So there's a little bit different format there, and it depends on how many stems that you have, whether or not uh, StatCrunch uh, shows it this way or just shows one value. But anyway, that's how fast you can answer that question. Let's move on. The next one says we need to create a dot plot. And again, we're given data. So we just click on Open in StatCrunch. The data's there. We go to Graph, look for Dot Plot. We're going to select that variable, click Compute, and there's our dot plot. And if we look around our dot plot there, let's blow them up so we can see that one a little bit better and compare these two dot plots. And yeah, our dot plot, 55, 60, matches that one. So I would I would say that is the right answer. So that's uh, how fast you can answer that question. If we go on to the next problem. This one is in pie charts. Uh, they're not going to make us uh, key in the data. If they, if they did, you could very easily plot it and tell which of these to use. But let's move on to the next question. Here we've got data again, pretty complex table. They want us to construct a scatter diagram. So here we click on Open in StatCrunch. Sometimes it's a little slow. Okay, it opened up there, and we've got two columns. One's labeled tar and one's labeled co. I don't know what tar and carbon monoxide and tar. This is from cigarettes. And so we want to 
Um, it says use tar for the horizontal or x-axis, carbon monoxide for the y-axis. So we go to stat and we want scatter plot. Our x-axis, the horizontal, they want tar. And our y-axis, the vertical, they want co. And I'm going to click on compute. And we've got a nice scatter diagram there that we need to compare. And again, let's just blow that one up so we can see a little more detail there. Yeah, that matches the one that we have there. So that problem is pretty easily solved. Let's go to the last problem. Here it says uh, data on indoor movie theaters listed by row for each year. Use the data to construct a time series graph. What is the trend? And we're going to click on this little icon, which will open up the table. And then there's our table. And then there's our icon that we want to copy to StatCrunch. So we've got our data in here. I'm going to close this table. So we've got the uh, ones we want to compare. And we want a time series graph. Well, how do we do that? Stat, uh, looking for time series. We don't have that. But we can start with a scatter plot, which is similar to the one we just done. We'll select our y-axis as the x-axis, horizontal axis is the year, and the y variable as number of indoor theaters. And now we're going to close in on display. Instead of points this time, we want a line. So we click on Compute, and we've got our line graph. And it shows a pattern here, which again, if I blow that one up, they look very similar. So how are you going to do that with a TI that fast? You can't even do it that fast with Excel unless you're very, very good at Excel. So this is another reason, again, to consider learning to use StatCrunch. And I will add a video showing the basic, basic basics of StatCrunch, all you need to know. Hope this helps.